Kent Brantley knew the danger, but when an Ebola outbreak hit Liberia earlier this year, the 33-year-old doctor from Indianapolis stayed to fight it, as did Nancy Reipel, a hygienist from Charlotte. The Ebola virus is highly contagious with close contact and is fatal in up to 90% of cases. There is no known cure. Doctors treating Ebola patients wear full protective gear, such as these synthetic suits and goggles. But Brantley still got infected, as did Ripoll. From the serious to the sublime, first of all, Ebola, whether or not it can make it here to the United States, how dangerous it could be, how scared some people are that this indeed could be one of those global pandemics. And now to the second part of our conversation, where you can now admit it. The first time somebody approached you, gave you a fist bump, you were confused, taken aback by what seemed to be yet another attempt at being cool in the greeting process. Yet now it's become a regular part of the male introduction scene and hygiene. All this and more as we fist bump Newsmax Deputy Health Editor Nick Tate, whom we may actually fist bump afterwards because you don't <laughs> do it when you say hi. Do you? I'm not sure. You know, I think the, the, it's still being worked out, you know, the protocol. We have to work, <laughs> we're going to be working out fist bump etiquette here, the way it sounds. <laughs> Let's start with the serious stuff right yeah. now. The Ebola outbreak has now two Americans right. that, are, uh, that are afflicted with this disease now. And immediately, this catches people's attention because the top question is, how scared should we be here in America that it will show up here? Well, CDC officials in the World Health Organization are saying that, in fact, it would be very difficult for Ebola to make its way to the U.S. The reason is, in West Africa, where we've seen all these cases, about 1,200, there aren't many direct flights to the U.S. You have to kind of stop some other place, and there are checks in along the way so people who have symptoms might be picked up and quarantined or taken off. But, as we saw from the two American cases, it is possible. These, uh, an infection like Ebola is an opportunistic infection. It is a world traveler, and these cases can spread beyond Africa and that's the big concern there's about a 21 day incubation period from infection to actually showing symptoms and when you have symptoms that's when you become infectious the good news about it is that it's not very easily spread it's you can't catch it through respiratory people sneezing or coughing there has to be fairly close contact the bad news is it's about 90% fatal in the number of, in the people who are infected. So if you get it, it's pretty bad. How close are they to finding a cure? I, you know, we've been writing about Ebola for, for decades, and uh, there really do not seem to be a step closer. There is a little piece of information in the latest story that suggests that the treatments that don't cure it, but they, they deal with the symptoms, which include gastrointestinal distress, vomiting, diarrhea, et cetera, bleeding, internal, external bleeding. They have found that the drug treatments for the people who've had it in this particular outbreak seem to be more infect, uh, effective than in the past, but nobody's really talking about a cure. Is it not fair to say, though, that when it comes to diseases, we always hear about the global pandemic, mm -hmm. and we hear about things that can spread because of airlines, mm -hmm. that there is still the possibility, number one, number two, the symptoms from Ebola are a lot like a lot of other different diseases here. So they are. They because look like you have them, don't just think you have Ebola. A lot of people are going to be walking into the doctor's office saying they think they have it now. Well, that's the good and the bad news. The bad news is that it may present like malaria. It may present like other conditions that you would have, and so it might not be recognized right away. But the good news is if you have a, if you have a stomach ache, if you have gastrointestinal distress, if you're vomiting, um, if you have diarrhea, Probably Ebola is not the first thing that you should think of if you're living in, in this country. But, you know, I don't want to minimize the concerns. And as you say, we live in a global society, and we are just one international flight away from a potential disaster. If, if this pa there was a patient who went from Nigeria to Liberia, had he landed in New York, had he landed in Washington, had he gone to Disney World, landed in Miami or L.A. or Chicago, we'd be looking at a very different picture today. All right, let's talk about Obamacare here. This is an interesting story. Adam O'Neill is the mayor of Belhaven, North Carolina. He walked 273 miles to Washington, draw attention to the closing of the local hospital in his small town, and also talking about other rural facilities here. They're caught in a monster bind by Obamacare right now. That's exactly right. There's about a dozen or more rural small hospitals that have closed since the passage of this law. Mm. What's happening is that the federal funding that has kept these places afloat is drying up. It's shrinking because the law presumes that more people who get insurance as required under the law will no longer go to the ER, will no longer go to the hospital, they'll see a doctor. But in fact, those patients are still showing up and the money to care for them and pay for them is not there.
So the mayor is really trying to highlight that this. There are other issues as well. I mean, there's been funding cuts. The Mandatory Budget Act cut about four and a half billion dollars from uh, American hospitals beginning last year. It's about 1.3 million per hospital, about 25 nursing mm. positions. And so those hospitals are already struggling to kind of make, make ends meet, and this is just making it more difficult for them. MIT economist Jonathan Gruber is somebody mm -hmm. that everybody in Obamacare knows mm -hmm. very well. He's made a, a statement recently that has uh, gotten a little bit of a tremor. Well, he, he was one of the early advocates and defenders of Obamacare and, and informed some of what was written what he there's a video that's emerged that has him talking in 2012 where he says that the the reason the subsidies were created only for those states that create their own exchanges was to provide an incentive for states to create their exchanges mm -hmm. now as we know 36 states have said we're not going to do that we're going to go with a federal program and now there is law there are lawsuits pending that argue that the language of the law makes those subsidies in those 36 states illegal the White House has argued, well, that's an oversight. It was a drafting error. Of course we meant everybody to get subsidies. But what Gruber's video suggests, it may be a smoking gun, that in fact there was thinking that informed the writing of the law to in fact create these exchange uh, subsidies only for those states that created them. And you know, the bigger picture for consumers beyond the politics and the debate is the, the residents of 36 states could lose billions of dollars and see their health premiums go up by as much as 75%, which is huge. All right, less than a minute left here. We're now finding out that the fist bump is more hygienic than a handshake. But I mean, let's face it, it is less human contact. It is, and, you know, How's and, that? It, and, and in these times of, uh, you know, opportunistic infections that are spread very easily, I think the fist bump is growing in popularity, particularly in hospital and healthcare settings. The, the re there's a new study out, what the, what the researchers did boldly. Uh, some of them dipped their hands into kind of a broth of E. coli, and then they, sh they fist bumped, they high-fived, and they shook hands with their colleagues, and then they measured how much transfer of bacteria. Twenty times as much tra uh, bacteria was transmitted by a handshake as a fist, fist bump. So I think we might see the popularity of the fist bump grow. I don't know. I can't see Donald Trump and certain <laughs> others saying hi to the president by going, Mr. President, That's how right. are you? Pressing the flesh is going to take on a whole new meaning from political in political circles. A uh, reminder, go to healthradarnow.com. Get your special offer on the Obamacare survival book, of course. Nick Tate, our deputy health editor, involved in Obamacare, the book itself, and the writer. And by the way, let's go ahead and... Okay, let's, as long as we do... See, now let's, let's do this because... I'm not one who goes with that. <laughs> Thank God I didn't do that, man. Very good. Off to New York City next, right here on the Newsmax TV network.